a disposable electronic cigar. And I bought this for two reasons. I wanted to ascertain, uh, well, if I, largely how it worked, but uh, I wanted to know if you could refill it with liquid and whether the battery was a rechargeable type. Because so many of these devices... Even disposable ones use a rechargeable lithium cell because it's it's cheaper than the non-rechargeable ones. So um, let's uh, investigate this. Now this came from a supplier in the UK called Vape-World-UK. There's quite a few suppliers of similar things and it's available in various flavours. I don't think these ones contain nicotine, mainly to make it easier to sell them on eBay without having their listings removed. Not that I think that eBay seems to bother about that too much these days, but I may be wrong. And it's notable that uh, when it originally came out of the package, there's a little sticker covering the mouth hole. And also, this was floating loose. And uh, looking at the picture, it's supposed to be wrapped around there, presumably to hide the fact that there is a little joint. And this flip one is mint flavour, and I have to say it's quite nice. It tastes... of a sweet candy mint. And the vapour it produces is okay. It's not cloud chaser vapour, but it's okay. So for the first uh, thing I want to find out is whether you could use uh, a dropper bottle to actually inject liquid in through here. So the best way to find that is to actually open this. And I'm guessing that this might be a clue, this seam here. So let's bring in the knife and... and uh, Actually, is this just going to break off? Oh, it's, it's soft and squishy. No, I think it's going to need... I think it's going to need sliced, but I can see a sort of borderline about here. So let's slice around there. Might be wrong. No, that's it. Just come off. Ooh. Don't know if it's supposed to come off with quite such a zest, but yeah, it's, it's come off. Okay, so here's the uh, container here. Is there anything really... There's nothing really stopping you from refilling that because what it's got inside is it's got the wicking material around the classic fiberglass uh, sort of sleeve. I'm going to... I'm just looking for a notepad here. I've opened similar things in the past and it seems to have a very similar construction. So let's uh, get a fresh page in the notepad. Bring this in and tame things down a bit. And focus on the notepad. So, by the look of it, uh, looking down the end of that, it looks as though there's this sort of fiberglass sleeve with this sort of, what you might call basically a wicking compound around it. A wicking compound. It's a wicking material. It looks like the sort of holofill polyester stuff that you find in mattresses. And the usual construction of these is that the fiberglass section has a sort of V cut and a V hole like that, and they just sort of take the wires up and they sit a little uh, heating element inside that with the sort of wick coming through it uh, and then when that's uh, put inside the uh, outer sleeve that then stores all the liquid in that uh, sort of fluff stuff and then it sort of generally feeds into that wick. It's a fairly common construction. The cap here, if that's the uh, wicking material and that's the little uh, stem up middle, there's a plastic tube and there's the cap here that you draw air through has that little hole in it. So technically speaking, you should be able to refill this, I would think, by carefully, if you held it vertically uh, and used the bottle, inserted the bottle, standard refill liquid bottle in. Actually, I wouldn't say vertically, I'd say hold it at an angle uh, and put it in so that it drips down into that sort of wicking material as opposed to dripping right down the middle of the... Uh, fiberglass section, because if it drips down the middle of the fiberglass section, the air tends to get pulled through there from the battery compartment, and it would actually potentially uh, go right down into the battery area. Not that that's usually a mega issue, unless you start pumping it full of liquid, but uh, it could uh, end up with stuff dribbling at the bottom. Does this come off? Yes, it does. All right, okay. Uh, so let's uh, get this out of the way change the brightness, bring this up and see if I can focus on this. Uh, I might be better. I might be better focusing down here and just, I know people hate the zoom, but you know what, I'm going to use the zoom because it kind of works. Uh, so what we've got in here is a, a silicon uh, insert here with the standard little electronic circuit. Now, if I come back out and we bring the notepad in again, and I go to another page in here, 
and focus back down the notepad. The usual arrangement in these things is they've got something that looks, I guess they're probably made by the same companies that make electric microphones. It's usually a little capsule and on the back of it, it's got the three connections uh, and an LED. And you've got plus, minus and output to the actual heating element. Uh, not necessarily in that order. Uh, yes, actually, more or less. Yes, it is actually in that order. Oh, that's that's luck. So uh, what you have, the heating element is connected to perhaps the positive uh, on one side and then it's switched to this middle pad. And this capsule inside, if that's the base with those contacts, it usually has a little chip inside it. And some connections going up and then there's a little hole in the top and a metal layer and then a sort of, with an insulating space, so there's a very thin conductive plastic film. And when you actually pull a vacuum on that, when you create, when you suck in the, the cigar, that uh, causes a pressure differential and that, foam fl that uh, film flexes up and touches the metal contact of the case. And that basically does the equivalent of those electronic cigarette devices with the clicky switch on them. And it just basically emulates that. It's pretty much the same chip inside that, usually about six pins. And that uh, triggers it, and that makes the LED glow, and that switches the heating element on. And this also monitors the voltage. And at the end of life, when the cell voltage gets too, too low, it treats it just as if it was a rechargeable cell, and it starts blinking the end light. So the question then is, can this be recharged? Well, the only way to find that out is to open it up. So let's uh, get some brightness back up. Let's focus up onto, let's use the, the knife as a nice focusing surface because it's not going to focus so easily on a curved object. And let's just shove this like this, perhaps. Is this going to push out? Yes, it is. There is the lithium cell. Can I poke this out further with a pen, maybe? That looks promising. Right. So what do we have here? We have the plastic tube, we have the wicking material here, we've got the lithium cell. We've got a solder joint here from the two heating element wires. The heating element is common to what looks like the negative, so it must be being switched to the positive. There's the connections to the little device, which are the, it's been poked through. Oh, let's poke that out then. No real need to poke it out, but let's poke it out anyway. So there is a little device. It's tiny because it's exactly the same one used in the sort of realistic sized electronic cigarettes, the one with the tiny useless little batteries in them. This one's got a modest sized cell. This is almost certainly rechargeable. The temptation is to drain it and then recharge it and measure the capacity. Uh, it's interesting that they have marked uh, with distinct bands of tape the positive end and the negative end. That must just be to make manufacturing easier. So there's the uh, microphone with the little, well, I say microphone, it looks like a microphone capsule, but um, it's not. Let's uh, just, uh, I know, I know, I'm sorry. So those of you with big, huge screens uh, find this annoying, but uh, for those of you with smaller screens, you'll find it quite useful to see close up like this. But it looks like the microphone capsule, but in reality, it's just the same case has been repurposed. It doesn't have any microphonic capability. All it can do is measure that pressure differential. In this case, it's been put into this silicon insert um, just to hold it spaced roughly in the middle. And these uh, little ports at the side here when pushing the end will create that negative pressure. They will limit the air in when you're drawing the air up the middle. And I guess, yep, you can see right up the end of that, uh, you can see the clear hole all the way through with that heating element and the wicking material. Uh, the wicking material is usually just spiraled round, which it is. There's the heating element in the fiberglass sleeve with its little uh, strands of whatever whatever they use in that material, probably unhealthy. I know some people are saying, you know, these fibres are bad to breathe in, but the reality is you're probably not breathing much of the fibres in, in normal use. It's certainly not quite as bad as asbestos. Um, so let's mush that back round and get uh, sticky liquid all over my fingers. 
Uh, and is this going to go back up? It's not going to go back up. I've really messed it up now, haven't I? Ugh. I should have wound that more tightly. Anyway, that's the gist of what's inside. Now I'm going to test that battery and see what I can find. Yes, that is a standard rechargeable cell with a capacity of approximately 550 milliamp hour. So that's interesting to know. I kind of expected it would be a rechargeable one. I think they're ultimately just the cheapest way to do it. Um, and to test this, I took the battery out of the uh, device and I put a Molex connector on it and just hooked it up to the guts of a novelty power bank uh, and that let me drain it, first of all, with this uh, LED sort of flashlight converter. Um, and then after I'd done that, all I did was uh, unplug this and charge it, plug it into the charger and then monitor the charge current. So that's quite good. Now, it's worth mentioning that uh, you can remove, if you want to open one of these, uh, you can, if you slit around that very carefully, if you slit around too deeply, you'll just end up cutting this whole section off and it won't go back together very well. But if you just cut through the sort of paper and the, what looks like a wrap of Captain Tape, then this bit can come off. And if you take it off, and I have to say, I removed the, the paper off the outside, it's, it's just a bit bleh, just that sort of like sticky brown paper that putting it anywhere near your mouth. I prefer the clean sort of silicon end. But if you actually do that, you can then drip liquid directly in. If you get a standard refill liquid, then you can run it down the sides of this uh, tube here so that it doesn't go down the middle of that, but just goes into the sort of wick material at the sides, and you can replenish it that way. And for charging the battery again, if you were so technically inclined, as long as you've got a device that can charge and stop at 4.2 volts, a sort of current limited 4.2 volt supply, then theoretically all you really need is access to the red and black wires in here, which uh, you could take the thing apart, but if you do that too often it's going to fall apart, but you could patch in a couple of wires and put a connector in, just if you were so inclined. Or you could just uh, get one, use it and then keep the battery out of it and use it for something else. Uh, so uh, interesting predictable. I mean, that's just how they make these things. It's very much the classic electronic smoking device. But um, yeah, pretty neat. Pretty, uh, pretty nice sort of, you know, things like the lithium cell and, uh, and it's nice to know, you know, you can refill it.